Mental Health on Mental Health with Mark Gunther. John Darvel. This week is Mental Health Awareness Week. A theme this year is about loneliness, and we talked about that together on Wednesday, asking how you look after your mental health. Now, being present was one of the things we learnt about. Spending actual real time with actual real people, smiling at people, putting the phone down, and try and be in the real world. Go on, put the phone down and try and be in the real world with real people. You will feel better because of it. And we've talked a lot about, on, on this show, about how different things can be used to help you open up your mind. And the biggest challenge, of course, is men. Men don't like to talk about their feelings, particularly if they're struggling. Now, we've covered stories about that with some tragic consequences on this program. But there is a lot of help out there as well. Men shed all over our regions, um, all over our part of the world. I um, spoke earlier uh, this week on the program on Wednesday to the founder of Talk Club, which is designed to do that very thing, to help you talk in a safe environment where men can open up and talk about how they're feeling. Now, Rob Reed was inspired by Talk Club. He has set up his own yoga classes in Canesham and Salford, specifically aimed at men. And Rob is with me here in the studio this afternoon. Good Hi. to have you on the programme. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. And you reminded me, it's been a good couple of years since we pre-COVID you were here. Definitely, yeah. I mean, at the time, I was talking about actually the fact that I'd set up my yoga for men classes yeah. in Bristol and that they'd been going for a, you know, a year or so and going strong. And obviously, the COVID period really affected that in terms of my ability to kind of meet in person. And so a lot of what I did for that COVID period was really, I suppose, go virtual. But I really we, we talked about that during the, during the pandemic. We would, I think we spoke a couple yeah. of times during the pandemic about yeah. how you were doing what you were doing online yeah. as we were all getting used to how do we do what we do yeah. but online yeah. and of course we're now back in that real world the, yeah. the you know um, we were talking during um, Neil Diamond about you know in January of this year we were all worried about Omicron and what was going to happen next and here we are hurtling towards the middle of May and well you know it's still around but it isn't the dominant thing in our world anymore no no and actually when i restarted my classes it was like around about this time last year so it was just around the time of the end of the third lockdown and my boys had just gone back to school and i must admit i was nervous about kind of going back into that kind of in-person space and actually mixing with the guys that i hadn't seen for yeah. the best part of a year year or so but actually what i realized even from that first week was that it was a you know, a huge benefit to me as much as them that we are able to kind of practice yoga again together, obviously with the social distancing rules yes. in place and that kind of thing. But for that, like, period through from May to the end of the year, I pretty much ran classes every week. And at times I honestly thought, you know, with Omicron and things like that, that maybe we were going to have to stop the classes again. But I really valued the fact that actually we were able to kind of keep that in-person connection because it just meant so much to us all. There's something you just really important in what you just said, the value, the fact that you were together, because, of course, you can do so many things online. Mm. And, and something we talked about on Wednesday about the, the world of digital media where we are connected, we have mm. friends and we have followers. But actually, it's all nonsense. Mm. When you're with people, that's when you are at the best or indeed you can gain strength from being with other people and, and, and talking absolutely fe freely without having to feel that you might be interrupting because you're there you can actually speak you can see somebody that's it and and, and so a lot of it for for, for for my yoga for men classes before even i'd kind of started to think about what i was going to do with talk club was you know if we had new starters join the class we would always introduce ourselves just by name just something yeah. simple just to go around the room now i've I've been going to yoga classes, as you can imagine, around Bristol for a long time. I've never had that. You know, you would kind of turn up, you roll your mat out and you just go. <laughs> Whereas for me, it was so important to kind of have that sense of community that a newcomer felt as welcome as anyone that had been coming to my classes ever since day one. And so that then evolution towards the, kind of the talk club structure felt like it made a lot of sense because it kind of taken, took that onto the next level. I mean, here's the thing, Rob, because, I mean, the reason Talk Club works is because and we had the founder of Talk Club on on yeah. Wednesday's programme and he always asks me when he comes on, how are you feeling out of 10? Yeah. And it's a great way to sort of check yourself, actually. Yeah. Uh, and it is an honest way. I mean, you, you're listening right now to... to Rob and I talking, you should ask yourself this question at least once a day. How are you out of 10? And be honest with the answer. And then you can work out what you can do to get yourself up to the next number. Now, that's a, a basic principle, but it's getting men to do that, getting my listener yeah. who just heard me do that. Will they do it? I hope so. Yeah. But then getting men to do yoga. Yoga is not considered, and you know this better than yeah. most, Rob, as a very masculine thing to do. It's yeah. a sort of what women do, and then they go and have a dry way and afterwards. Yeah. It, it isn't a sort of a male thing. 
good it is, isn't it? Definitely. And actually, this week alone, I've had 17 men come to my classes across the Canesham and Salford classes. Yeah. And last night, in particular in Salford, it was really powerful because we did the scores. How are you out of 10 before we yeah. started the class? So it was the check-in and then we do the check-out at the end as well. And two of the guys there, one of them runs a construction company and the other actually works for his company. So they were exactly the type of people you would never have expected yeah. to see at a yeah. yoga class. They wouldn't know what a yoga mat was. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and the guy, one of the guys came up to me at the end and shook me by the hand and just said it was absolutely incredible. And like, he never realised how tense or tight or wow. how much he really needed it. Just in that one hour, it made that difference. Now, whether he comes back to my classes again is another matter. But at the end of the day, he's kind of taken that little bit of time and given himself permission to kind of prioritise what mattered to him just through those four corners of the mat. So not only is that validation for you, but for him, and, and that, again, is something that maybe Mental Health Awareness Week is also about, the loneliness, is giving yourself time, giving yourself the space to go out, yeah. to say hello, to sit in a, a, a cafe and just see what happens. Yeah. Because what is the worst that could happen? Well, it's nothing. I suppose, but anything more is, is, is great. And, and it's interesting about the whole male thing. Uh, Richard, um, who, who reads our news, who I call mm. Dickie, dear friend, I've known him for years, mm. he goes to yoga with Pammy, who works mm. on the mm. programme. He loves it. Mm. Um, and, you know, he's a proper Yorkshire man, is, yeah. is, is, yeah, our, is yeah. our Richard. Right. But he absolutely adores yoga. And, and yeah. Pammy teaches it. Brilliant. I, I, I'm not convinced myself, but yeah. uh, it's, only, I suppose it's only a matter of time. Yeah. What does it do? What does it do for men? Yeah. Yoga. Well, I think I think the thing is that for, for you know it can do many different things. Like last night at the class, I kind of talked about the fact that obviously, as I said, we had some newcomers there. The physical benefits come first. Like for example, somebody might be particularly tight or tense in a mm. part of the body, and so it gives them that opportunity to kind of think, actually, take a step back for a moment, and consciously become aware of that, and then how they can kind of move their body that helps maybe ease some of that those aches or tensions. But alongside that, and it's kind of probably what we've talked about before, the mental fitness, the mental health benefits, the kind of things that talk club talk about, follow on. And they're the things that have a legacy. So the physical benefits, you might come out of the class and think, wow, that was absolutely like amazing. So uh, you feel physically better. Those yeah. are the endorphins so the which energy, come from the exercise. Positivity, yeah. The fact you're doing it with other men. <clears throat> but actually those mental health benefits, and I've had it so many times with the guys, whether they've ever done it in the class when we've done the kind of scoring, mm -hmm. or just contact me personally afterwards and said, this is how it's made a difference in my life outside of the mat outside mm. of the class that's that's where i know it's making a difference why do you do it why do i do it why do you do it you're good dad you've yeah. had your business yeah yeah um you've worked work now with with talk club why do you do it I why is this your mission I, 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 honestly there, there are times when i think actually it's a lot a lot to kind of lead on in terms of like championing men's health mm. but actually it matters to me in terms of my own health and well-being and so i know you know some of the struggles that i faced during lockdowns in terms of loneliness and those kind of aspects um and also you know when my boys were born and like the strain it put on me as much as Michelle, my partner, um, to kind of get through those early days. And it was at that time, really, I suppose, that yoga became like a priority for me because it was actually really easy to do. It was kind of the thing that I could just roll out a mat at home or not even have a mat, just mm, sit on the carpet and just spend some time kind of moving through different shapes, maybe just sitting there and just meditating, just giving myself that permission. Isn't, isn't that the point of this, Rob? is that everyone's got so much going on in, in their world. And it's easy to, and I'm probably guilty of this, it's easy to play things like digital media because yeah. you're absorbing yourself in your mobile phone yeah, rather yeah. Than, than, than seeing the real world. But there's, there's so much going on. You know, we, are, we are almost led to believe that if we're not connected, we're missing out. So we have to be connected to the pace, the pace, the pace, the yeah. pace, the pace, that we run and we run faster and we, yeah. we move quicker. But the reality is you've got to take time just to breathe. And I'm not talking me time. Um, I'm just talking about, yeah. you know, give yourself five minutes, pause, yeah. breathe, see what happens. That's it. And actually the scoring is really powerful because when you ask someone, how are you out of 10, I almost guarantee that you will pause for a moment, even if it's just one single breath, look up and think, what is my score today? And then as soon as you benchmark your score, you think, well, actually, if it's that, then what can I do in the next period of time what's your to score today score. what's your score today i would say i'm a nine i was i was wow. a six and a half before my class last night right because i had a really busy day at school and my uh, at work and my my head just felt completely full with lots of different priorities by the end of the class it was eight and a half because i felt like actually it had done a lot for me physically but most importantly it had done a lot for me mentally and everybody's score in the room went up 
And, and that is the brilliant. thing, is that actually, even in that small time that we have together, it makes that much of a difference. And like you said earlier, it's a validation for, you know, why these guys come and join me, but also for me, why I believe it's so important that I do it. And it is important, isn't it, that, that you have this time, and it is important that, like Talk Club, working with Talk Club, that this gives men, and you talked about construction workers there, you, you wouldn't think of it, would you? Right. But it, it, it can be for anybody. For those listening to us right now, Rob, who might be thinking, yeah, but really, I don't have a mat, I don't have any leg warmers, you're never going to get me in a leotard and lycra, all, all of the other cliches that are out there about yoga... Describe that class. What, do you, what have you got to wear? What, what's, what's the routine? Yeah. You know, all the things that might stop people from going to do it. Yeah. What is the reality of doing it? Well, I think one of the things that I've certainly had most often is men apologise almost about being too inflexible to do yoga. So that already becomes a point for why you should do it. Because okay. if, you, if you feel like you're too inflexible, then probably what you need to do, and let's not just label it as yoga, mm. let's just do something that's stretching, mm. moving your body in a way that's a real benefit to you. And um, and then alongside that, in terms of what you wear, then nothing really matters in terms of like you know what you put on. The industry might create an illusion that you need to be in the you know the, 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 yeah. the kind of luminous leggings and whatever else, the trappings that kind of come with that. But actually, what I try well, to that's just the way, that's the way of selling it, though, isn't it? And it that's is. the way of selling the it product is. to go with the service. Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, I'm wearing a Yoga Dad T-shirt today as well, so that's yeah. kind of part and parcel of it. But actually, for the most part, for everybody, it's just kind of coming and being yourself just letting all that other stuff go yeah and then just taking yourself down into a space and just and as much as you are alone on the mat you feel that connection through other people in the room with you interesting question that's just come in um it's on whatsapp thank you for this um like to know where you can do teen yoga because so many teens are struggling right now aren't they just yeah because it's been you know I, I just look at my own kids and you look at all their friends and what have you sure they've gone through it i mean they're yeah. you know our lives i'm 56 so two years out of 56 is not yeah. that much yeah, yeah. but two years out of when you're 12 that's a lot yeah over yeah. the last two years i mean teen yoga is that is it yeah. is, is there such a thing there is i mean i certainly don't i don't teach it myself but yeah i'm certainly um qualified as like a children's yoga teacher what i do do though is like as part of like i'm a, I'm a coach for my, my boys football yeah. team so at Whitchurch, and uh and what we do there is just like um like a stretch session as part of the warm up for the for the lads. So again, they're only like six, and so they're not because the footballers do yoga now, don't they? Because all, all like the, the, the uh, malleability and stretchability. Absolutely, of them. and of course for for your, your your inquirer around that, I suppose they could they could look on Google and see what they can find in terms yeah. of teen yoga teachers, and there are some definitely out there. But from from my point of view, it's about instilling from an early age for my children and for the children that kind of join me at the football as well. That actually just taking that five minutes out just to do a bit of stretching they might not see it as yoga yeah but actually already it's kind of laying the foundations for their future now um we've got a couple of minutes before um i've, I've got travel and a couple of yeah. songs to play as well um give us a some sort of thing that we could all do sure. obviously if you're not driving a car right no, now no. don't do it if you're driving a car because absolutely uh, this you know this will cause havoc and the, you know, yeah. we know the roads are busy on a friday <laughs> as it is so give us something we could do now okay brilliant stuff so for mental health awareness week it's all yeah. around loneliness so let's try and find a way to kind of connect and this is something i did with the guys this week so just find yourself a comfortable position that could either be standing or sitting down mm -hmm. and just close your eyes just for a moment so just bringing yourself kind of into whatever space you're in at this moment and just kind of tuning in to any aches or tension you might be feeling in the body and just taking a moment just to be at one with yourself. Now, rub your hands together. So generate some heat through the hands, almost like you're rolling a ball of dough. So generating some heat, nice warmth through the hands. And when you feel like your hands are warm enough, mm -hmm. just rest the hands over the eyelids and wrapping the fingers around the top of the head. So already we're kind of feeling that sense of connection, that warmth through our hands as they kind of soak down through our eyelids, down through the eyes onto the eye sockets and just giving ourselves a little bit of time out there. Now sliding the hands down across the front of the upper body. So one hand across the belly, other hand across the heart. Now again, we bring that sense of connection now through the heart, through the hand, all the way along the arm and from head to toe, rippling around the body. And that greater sense of awareness through the other hand across the belly for our breath. So each time we breathe in, we feel the belly expand into the palm and then empty back out again. And then we slide both hands now down across the belly, tucking the elbows nicely in towards the side of the body, opening things up across the front of the body. And then feeling that expansion through the, through the hands, opening up the body, 
feeling that little bit lighter, lifting up towards the ceiling and settling back down towards the floor. And then lifting the hands now up across the ribs, palms along the side body, fingers in towards one another, feeling the ribs expand away. And then back towards the centre again with the fingers and then hands across the chest, palms across the nipples, across the chest, fingers towards one another. And seeing whether you can lengthen, deepen, direct the breath through the hands up towards the chest, maybe all the way up towards the shoulders. And then sliding the hands back down again across the knees. Taking a moment, just seeing how that felt for you today. And then when you're ready, nice soft gaze, open the eyes. There we go. I had, to say, I had to keep my eyes open for some of that because obviously I'm, I'm, not, I'm not driving a car, but I am driving a radio station. Absolutely. That was lovely. Um, Rob, great to see you again. See you are a force of nature. And Brilliant. for the work you do with men, thank you. And there's a lot of men, obviously, who've clearly appreciated what you've done awesome. as part of Male uh, Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, Rob Reed, um, he of, well, Yoga Dad, and amongst other things. Thank you very much indeed. Super.